Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 42. Day 42 of the third edition. Third edition, day 42, we are on page number 251 and we'll cover the topic of distance formula today. Distance formula. Distance formula, we will find, soon learn that is just a very fancy way of saying application of Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. Distance formula is nothing more than the application of Pythagorean theorem. If you know the Pythagorean theorem, you know distance formula. Distance formula distance formula is nothing but is nothing but Pythagorean theorem incognito it's just a Pythagorean theorem in disguise it doesn't look like Pythagorean theorem but that's exactly what it is it's just an application of it. Incognito simply means in disguise. We have learned this word before in our vocabulary lessons. Vocabulary day 42. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, if you're interested in getting a better score in the verbal part as well, uh, having having a decent vocabulary is a must. Just type in GRE, GRE vocabulary words day 42. The video will pop right up. On day 42 we learned about incognito which simply means in disguise. So what is what is the distance formula if somebody were to ask you? Answer simply is is simply Pythagorean theorem incognito. For example, for example, here are the two points. Let's first let's let's first prove the coordinate system here. Here is point A with the with the coordinates x1, y1, and let's say here is point two or point B, x2, y2. And the question is what is this distance? A to B. But the way we're going to find out this distance is by making it by making a Pythagorean theorem by making a right angle triangle that is. Pythagorean theorem is only applicable if we're dealing with a right angle triangle. So let's 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 drop a let's drop a perpendicular. Let's drop a perpendicular and let's draw this line here. Since this is a perpendicular, this is 90 degrees, and now we have a right angle triangle. You'll see that when we apply Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out the distance A to B. Because distance A to B is now simply the hypotenuse. We want to find the length of the hypotenuse as long as we know the length from A to, let's give this point a name, A to C, as long as we know the distance from A to C, and as long as we know the distance from B to C, we can figure out the hypotenuse. So let's find out what the distance, let's find out what those distances are. A to C, A to C. Distance, distance A to C is how much? Well, it's very straightforward. In order for in order for us to ascertain the distance from A to C, we have to first know the coordinates of point C. The coordinates of point C, the x coordinate of point C, is going to be the same as the x coordinate of point B because it's, it's because we dropped a perpendicular, which means line BC is parallel to y-axis. If line C is line, if line B C is parallel to y axis, then the x coordinate of point C must be the same as the x coordinate of point B, which is x2. Similarly, the y coordinate of point C must be same as the y coordinate of point A, because A C is parallel to x axis. The y coordinate of point A is y1, therefore the y coordinate of point C must also be y1. Now we can figure out the distance from A to C. A to C, A to C is x2 minus x1. The x coordinate of point C is x2, x coordinate of point A is point x1, so it's x2 minus x1. Similarly, we can figure out the distance from B to C. Distance from B to C distance from B to C is simply the y coordinate of point B minus the y coordinate to point C. The y coordinate to point B is y2 
y coordinate of point C is y1, so you simply y2 minus y1 is this distance. This distance here is y2 minus y1. And this distance we just found out was x2 minus x1. Voila. y2 minus y1. y2 minus y1. We are almost done. Now we can now we can tackle the hypotenuse. Let's call this d for distance. Let's call it d for distance, which is what we're going to find out. We want to find out we want to find out distance a to b. We're going to call it d for distance. And now we apply the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem tells us that the square of the hypotenuse has to equal to the square of the other has to equal to the sum of the square of other two distances. X2 minus x1 squared minus or rather plus plus the, the Pythagorean theorem goes something like this c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. There we go. So plus the 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 b squared, which is this part here, the, the b to c, is y2 minus y1. And this here, this here, as you can clearly see, is just Pythagorean theorem. But this is, this is distance formula. That this is so-called the distance formula. That's all it is. Distance formula and Pythagorean theorem are one and the same. There is no difference. There is absolutely no difference. Let's do the problem that appears in the book. Let's do the problem that appears in the book. We need the room, so we need to get rid of some of the stuff. We're looking at we're looking at the example that appears on page 251. Example that appears on page 251. We are given points. Actually, we we're just going to do it here so that so that we can have the room to do the work. We are given two points. Point P, point Q. We are told is minus two minus three. Just give me one second. Yes, Q and R. Q, we are told is minus 2, minus 3, and point R, we are told is 4 and 1 and a half, 4 and 1.5. And the question simply is, what is the distance from Q to R? Q to R. We don't actually have to plot it, but we're going to plot it, plot it anyway because, because it's in the book. In the book they plot it, so we're just going to do it, just for the sake of doing it. So minus 2 and minus 3. Let's do it here. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. It doesn't have to be accurate as long as it's reasonable. Do you understand? Minus 2 and minus 3. Minus 2 and minus 3. It'll be down here somewhere. This is our point Q. And 4 and 1 and a half. 4. 1, 2, 3. 4 and 1 and a half is going somewhere here. This is our 4 and 1.5. And what we're looking for is this distance right here, Q to R. This distance right here. Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it. So how much is, drop the perpendicular as, as we did before, drop the perpendicular here. We have Q, R, let's call this point S. And what are the, what are the coordinates of point S? Well, the X coordinate of point S is going to be the same as the X coordinate of R, which is 4. And the Y coordinate of point S is going to be the same as the Y coordinates of Q, which is negative 3. Now we can figure out distance from Q to S. Q to S. But that's what it is. I'm not going to raise this thing. Let's do it up here. Distance from Q to S. Q to, Q to S it goes from all the way from negative 2 to 4, which is 6. And distance from R to S. R to S. 
it goes all the way from negative 3 to 1 and a half. Negative 3 to 1 and a half is going to be 4 and a half from, from, from point R from point R to the x-axis is one and a half and then we have three more units here so it's four and a half. That's it. Now we can figure out the distance. This is the distance we are looking for. Distance B. B squared is going to be equal to six squared plus four and a half squared. Voila. I'm going to erase this part now because it's getting to be too much. 6 squared is very straightforward, it's 36. How much is how much is 4.5 squared? How the hell do I know? Let's do it out, shall we? 4.5 squared. 4.5 squared is same as 4.5 times 4.5, isn't it? 4.5 squared is same as 4.5 times 4.5. Now we can figure it out. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 halves are 2. Again, 4 halves are 2. And a quarter. I should have done the other way, the arrows. 4 times 4 is 16, 4 halves are 2, and now we do 4 halves are 2, and half, half, half times half is a quarter. Half times half is a quarter. And if it makes it easier for you to see the arrows, I'm going to put these in different colors. Half times 4, and half times half. There you go. It's just 16 plus 2 plus 2 plus a quarter, that's 20 and a quarter. 20 and a quarter, which gives us 56 and a quarter. And that's our d squared, which means d is the square root of 56 and a quarter. And at this point, you just pick up your calculator, 56.25, take the square root of it, and you're all done. But I'm going to do something different. We're going to do something different here. We can erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this thing. Or can we do it? Let's do it right here. Okay, what we are about to do is insane. I, I will be the first one to admit it because uh, it's just it's just a fluke. That's all it is. It's just a pure coincidence that uh, when I did it out uh, without actually doing the looking at the thing here, uh, we know the square root of 49, we know the square root of 49 is exactly 7 and we know the square root of 64 is exactly 8. So 49, 49 to 60, 64, and we are at 56. We are at 56. We are, we are, we are somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here. I'm not suggesting that it's going to be this logic actually works, but somewhere in the middle here. So I said to myself, why not try seven and a half? Why not try seven and a half and see what happens? Let's just try seven and a half and see what happens. Seven and a half, seven and a half squared is what we want to find out. We want to find out what seven and a half squared is which is same as seven and a half times seven and a half and again same as before so follow me here seven times seven is forty nine seven halves are three halves and half times let's do it in a different color half times seven again is going to be seven halves and half times half is a quarter it should be this should be seven half, not three half. This should be seven half. Seven times half. This part we are talking about. Seven times half is seven half. We are almost done. Seven half plus seven half is fourteen half. Fourteen half is seven. So it's forty nine plus seven plus a half. Forty nine plus seven is fifty six. Fifty six and a half, or fifty six and a quarter rather. Fifty six and a quarter, which is exactly what we have here. So the distance that we're looking for is ex it happens to be just a coincidence, just a fluke, just a happy coincidence that it happens to be exactly seven and a half. But of course, in the exam, you wouldn't have, you would, we wouldn't know this for sure. So you just put, punch it in, fifty-six point two five, take a square root of it, and it's exactly seven and a half. Do you understand? I'm not going to start any new topic today. Tomorrow, tomorrow's. Tomorrow we'll do a topic, uh, we'll do the video about the equation of a line and the topic is going to be slope-intercept formula. Slope-intercept formula. Do you know it? That's what we're going to do tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.